Hi there, welcome to episode one. So hopefully you've seen the introductory video and you know more or less what the series is about, but uh, in short, we're going to be making some sort of top-down shooter game. In this first episode, I would like to get the uh, basics of the player controller working, so essentially just moving around and looking at the mouse pointer. Um, let's start by just creating a little folder called scripts and two c -sharp scripts, one for our player, which is essentially uh, where all the player input is going to be coming from. And that player script will send that input to the second script we'll create, which is the actual player controller. All right, so let's open up the player script and I just quickly want to delete these default comments. So uh, the first thing we want to do is to get uh, the movement input for our player. So let's create a vector three called move input. And set this equal to a new vector three. And we want to get the input on the horizontal and vertical axes. So we can say input dot get axis. And we pass in horizontal. We can leave the y axis alone. And input dot get axis vertical. All right, so now we've got our move input. We now want to um, turn that input into a direction and then multiply that by some movement speed. So let's create a public float variable up here called move speed and just set it equal to five. And uh, we can say vector three move velocity is equal to move input and we want to normalize that so that we just get the direction of the input and then we'll multiply that by the move speed. Okay, so next we want to pass the move velocity into the other script, the player controller, so that it can handle all of the physics. Um, so we need to get a reference to our player controller. So over here, let's uh, create a player controller variable and we can just call this our controller. And in the start method, we can say controller is equal to, and we can get the player controller component. Okay, so now in this line, we're, we're assuming that the player controller is attached to the same game object as our player script. Um, so just to make sure that it really is, we can add the require component attribute up here. Um, we can say type of, player controller. So now if we add this player script to an object, it will force it to add the player controller script along with it. And then uh, we know that this won't return an error. All right, so now we can say controller dot move, which is a method that will exist in our controller script in just a moment. And we can pass in our move velocity. Great, let's hop over to the player controller script. And uh, once again, I'm just gonna delete these comments. Um, in fact, I'm gonna delete the whole update method and go to create a public void move instead. This takes in vector three velocity. And uh, now we want to move our player object by that velocity. Um, we want to use a rigid body to move it so that, uh, so that it sort of constrains to collisions. So let us make a little rigid body variable up here. We can maybe call that my rigid body. And in the start, once again, we can uh, just assign this component. My rigid body is equal to get component type of rigid body. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing where I require this class to have a uh, rigid body attached to it. So we can say require component type of rigid body. All right, now rigid bodies, um, you only really want to move them in the fixed update method. So let's create public void fixed update. And the reason you only want to do it in the fixed update method is that um, it, it needs to be executed at sort of small regular steps so that uh, it never goes through an object. So fixed update, if you've got a sort of slow frame rate, it's calling fixed update multiple times a frame 
sort of doing the movement in little increments. Um, so what we want to do is create a variable out here, a vector three variable called velocity. And uh, it, it's going to be a bit confusing having two variables named velocity. So let's, let's maybe call this one underscore velocity. And in here, we'll simply say that velocity is equal to underscore velocity. And then in the fixed update method, we can say that our rigid body's position, um, so we'll say my rigid body dot, whoa, we don't want to add explosive forces, we just want to simply move the position of the rigid body. So we need to give it a new position now. So we want to go my rigid body dot current position and add the velocity that we want to move to that. And uh, we want to multiply that velocity by time dot fixed delta time, which is just the time in between uh, the calls to fixed update. Okay, so if we come here and create a capsule, perhaps, for our player, let's rename this capsule player, um, and we assign our player script to there. First of all, you can see that the player controller and the rigid body have automatically been added because of that little require uh, component tag. And uh, now, let us also add into the scene a plane so that our player doesn't just fall endlessly. I'll just move the player up to one. Um, let's. This is all looking very white, so let's create a folder for materials. And we're going to create a new material over here. I can call this ground, duplicate that with command D, and call this player. Quickly assign those player, ground. Um, I'll maybe make the player a reddish color. I'm just going to turn the smoothness all the way down. Um, the ground will just leave white. Uh, looks fine like that. Um, so let's also let's uh, rotate the camera a bit. I'm going to put this at a 75 degree angle and uh, just move it somewhere somewhere over here. We obviously want to play with that. Um, so now if we press play, we can move around using WSD or arrow keys. Um, yeah, the, the player can currently topple over, which is just the rigid body doing its thing. Um, we don't want it to do that, so let's go into the constraints and just say, don't affect my rotation, please. Um, now, that should be fine. Um, I don't really like the sort of smoothing that it's uh, giving it. I, we're going to implement our own smoothing later. So let's quickly go into the player script, and instead of using get access, um, we're going to use get access raw, which just means that uh, it doesn't do any uh, default smoothing. So now the controls should be super snappy, as in as soon as we let go of the key, uh, the player should stop. Okay. So the next thing on our list is to get the uh, player rotating to look at the cursor. So Basically, what we're going to need to do is to uh, fire a ray from the camera uh, sort of through the position of the cursor and see where that hits the ground, and that will be the point that we want our player to rotate to. So there's a pretty nice way of doing this. In our player script, we first need to get a reference to the camera. So uh, let's just say camera. We can call this our view camera, perhaps and uh, um, we can just set our view camera equal to camera.main and now let's go down into the update method and let's create a new ray uh, just called ray and this is equal to view camera dot screen point to ray which is a wonderful method which allows us to give it a screen position in this case the position on the screen of our mouse and it will return a ray that goes from the camera through that position and uh, just on into infinity. So now we need to intersect that ray with our ground plane to see where we want our player to be looking. So uh, we don't have to go to all the bother of actually sort of uh, fetching the ground plane from our game world. Um, we can just generate a plane programmatically. Um, plane, we can call it ground plane. 
and it's equal to a new plane. We need to pass in um, the normal of the plane, which is just the sort of direction uh, perpendicular to the plane. So if the plane is lying flat, that will be a vector that's pointing straight up. So vector 3 dot up. And uh, we also just need to give it a um, an in point, uh, which yeah, we can just make that vector 3.0, it doesn't matter terribly. Um, so what we want to do now is simply create a float called uh, maybe ray distance, and we leave that unassigned, you'll see why in a moment. Um, we can just say if ground plane, and we can use the plane's ray cast method, which takes in a ray, which will be just our ray that we've created, and it takes out float enter. So in case you've never come across the out keyword before, uh, all that it means is that we're going to uh, give out a variable, in this case our ray distance, and it is going to assign that variable a value. Um, so let's pass in our ray and out ray distance. So uh, this if statement will return true if the ray intersects with the ground plane, and if it does, then we'll know the length um, from the camera to that intersection. So we can say that our actual point of intersection, we can just um, yeah, we can just call that point, is equal to, and we can use ray dot get point, and this just needs to know the distance. So we pass in the ray distance, and it will return the point. Um, so, just to sort of demonstrate this visually, uh, so that we know exactly what we're dealing with here, let us do a debug dot draw line, which wants to start in the end position. So for the start position, we can just use ray dot origin, and for the end position, we'll use our point. And uh, let's just use color dot red uh, to draw the line. So if we go here into Unity and press play, you can see that as we look around, um, this line is being drawn from the camera onto the ground. So that is our point of intersection that we want to look at. Okay, so let's go back in. Um, I'm just going to comment out this line. Uh, we maybe want to look at that again, I don't know. Um, so just leave it in there. Um, now we're going to say controller dot look at, which once again we haven't created yet, but we will in a moment. We want to look at point. Okay, let's go into our player controller and create this look at method. Public void look at takes in a vector three look point. Okay, and uh, basically we're going to use the transform dot look at method, um, just like that. Uh, of course, if we run this now, um, our, our player is sort of going to stoop down to, to try look at that point. Um, so we need to raise that point up on the y-axis to be level with the player. So uh, let's call this vector3... Um, uh, I can't think of an elegant name, so I'll just call it height corrected point is equal to a new vector 3. So for the x, that uh, just uses look point dot x. For the y, however, we want to use our own transforms height, so transform dot position dot y. And then for z, of course, we use look point dot z. And then instead of looking at look point, we look at our height corrected point. Okay, let's save and run that. And, okay, well, we can't really see that we're turning now because it's such a featureless uh, capsule. So let's maybe select the player. Let's go into above mode. Um, maybe I'll turn on gizmos here so we can also see just a wire frame of the capsule collider. And you can see that it is indeed looking towards the cursor. And we can move around, go crazy. Um, it's, it's, it's moving around nicely. So all that's left for this episode is to save our scene. We um, can call this maybe game. And uh, let's create a new folder to store our scenes in. 
couple of scenes, put game in there. And yeah, that brings episode one to a conclusion. I hope you've enjoyed, and I also hope that you'll join me next episode, where we look at creating a nice little weapon system. So until then, thanks for watching.